Hi, general psychology students. Today we're going to look at our memory system, starting with memory components. There are three, maybe four, parts of our memory system. We'll start with sensory memory, then we'll take a look at working memory, sometimes interchanged with short-term memory, and then long-term memory. Our sensory memory is the first place that information stops on its way to becoming a longer-term memory. So think of it as getting information into your memory system. It is extremely brief. You can only hold this information for about one second, and it's very small in terms of its capacity, about 12 pieces of information. Once information has made its way through the sensory memory, we get it into our working memory. And anytime you are thinking about something, you're using your working memory. So if you're consciously thinking, that's your working memory at work. And the length of it can really be as long as you can hold your attention. And let's go ahead and test the capacity of our working memory. So I'd like you to pull out a piece of paper and a pen or pencil. And I mean it, go ahead and pause me and get a pen or a pencil and a piece of paper. Now that you have your materials, I'm going to read you some sequences of letters. After I've read it, I'll say go, and I want you to write down the sequence as best as you can, so exactly the same order that I have read it. Don't write it while I'm reading, that's not testing your memory, but wait until I say go. So we'll start with the first one. B, e, F, G, go. Next, T, L, A, D, go. Next one, R, E, H, J, K, go. Next one, P, L, W, O, R, S, go. Next one, A, X, F, L, U, M, Y, go. Next one, E, O, G, K, P, Z, I, G, go. And the last one, L, U, S, I, W, F, K, A, O, Go. Okay, let's see how you did. Here are the strings of letters that I read. Look and see how many you got right. My guess is most of us got around that seven letter sequence correct because the capacity of our working memory is magic number seven plus or minus two. So that means most of us are around seven with some of us able to get all the way up to that nine letter sequence and others of us closer to the five letter sequence. So for working memory, again this lasts as long as you can hold your attention on something and it's about seven pieces of, of information and capacity and the way we keep information in our working memory is we rehearse it. We go over and over and over it. So when I was reading the letters, you were probably trying to quickly say the sequence in your head in order to try to retain it in your working memory. Another way that we can keep information in our working memory is to associate it with existing memories. So link the new working memory information to other short-term or perhaps long-term memories. Now when we look at short-term memory, this is short, like working memory. Uh, it's about seven pieces of information, also like working memory, and it is quickly forgotten 
unless it is rehearsed or repeated and then transferred into long-term memory. So that's also very similar to working memory. Now when we look at our long-term memory system, the length is indefinite. So we could hold a piece of information basically for as long as those cells in our brains are alive. And the capacity of our long-term memory is virtually limitless because we can hold billions of pieces of information and we will never tax the capacity of our long-term memory systems in our lives. So here's a summary of the components of our memory from sensory memory to working memory then short and long-term memory.